all plants are green. Now the different flowering plants that you see around makes the nature very vibrant. Now we already know that flower is the reproductive part of the plant. So male flowers contain pollen grains which is the male reproductive part and the female flowers have ovules which is the female reproductive part. Now fertilization between these two reproductive cells causes the formation of the next generation. So these flowering plants are grouped under the phylum Spermatophyta where spermato comes from the word sperm and phyta means plant. These spermatophytes are commonly seen around us. These are flowering plants that have both the male and the female reproductive parts in the flower. And that is why they are grouped under, the spermat under spermatophyta. Now, in future, these flowers form the fruits that encloses the seed within itself. Since the seeds remains enclosed within the fruit, these plants are known as angiosperms, where angio means covered and sperms means seeds. But certain spermatophytes do not have seeds enclosed within the fruit. Their seeds remain exposed or naked to the environment. Such spermatophytes are known as gymnosperms, where gymno means naked and sperms means seeds. The male and the female reproductive parts of the plants are present in separate structures known as cones. This is a female cone and this is a male cone. And both these female cones and male cones carry the respective female or the male reproductive parts. Now, have you seen greenish dirty ponds like these? Or have you seen these filamentous structures which are green? See, both these structures that you see are green and hence they have to be classified as plants. But they do not have plant-like structures. See? They have a dust-like appearance, whereas that has a thread-like filamentous appearance. This dust-like uh, green plants that you see floating on the pond is unicellular and these branched thread-like structures that you see are multicellular. Now, these dust-like plants that float around on the pond is known as algae and these filamentous green plants that you see is known as spirogyra. Now, these plants have the features like the normal plants that is, they are green. But unlike plants, Algae is unicellular, that is single-celled, but spirogyra is multicellular, that is many-celled. These plants do not have flowers, they do not have plant-like structures such as leaves, stems and roots. Now, since they do not have flowers, they cannot reproduce sexually. So, how do they reproduce? Well, they reproduce with the help of spores. Spores we'll discuss in some time. Now these organisms are grouped under the phylum Thalophyta where thalo means shapeless and phyta means a plant. Now have you seen old cars like these on which green substances have grown or huge trees like these on which 
green structures have grown on the trunk. Well, even these are plants. If you see it closely, you, can, you will find the leaf-like structures on these plants. Not only leaves, they also have roots that form from the under surface of the stems. Now, why do the roots form from the under surface of the stems? Well, unlike big trees, they do not have a well-developed vascular system that is well-developed xylem and phloem. So these roots are directly inserted into the bark of the bigger plants on which they grow and they directly absorb the nutrition from it. Thus, it helps in living. Now, even these plants do not have flowers. So how do they reproduce? Well, they reproduce with the help of spores. Spores are the unit of asexual reproduction. And these spores are contained in the bag-like structures known as the spore sacs. Now, when these spore sacs burst open, the spores inside, they get dispersed to the nearby environment and from the spores, new plants develop. These plants which are characterized by the presence of small leaves, roots from the underside of the stem, they do not have flowers, they do not have a well-developed vascular system, that is the xylem tissue and the phloem tissue, and finally they reproduce with the help of spores, are grouped under the phylum bryophyta, where bryo means moss, and phyta means plant. Few examples of bryophyta are mosses and liverworts. Now, are flowerless plants limited only to small plants? No. Huge plants like these, which have a proper uh, plant-like structure with proper root system, proper leaves and stems, can also be flowerless. Now, these plants have proper leaves, proper roots. They also have a proper vascular system, yet they are flowerless. So, how do these plants reproduce? Well, if you turn the back side of the leaves, then you will find these pore sacs which contain spores in them. When these spore sac bursts, the spores are dispersed in a large number and that is why you will find a lot of these plants growing in a very crowded fashion in a very small area because the spores get dispersed in the nearby area and they form new plants from there. Now these plants have uh, the different characteristics such as they have proper roots and leaves, they have a proper vascular system, they are flowerless so they reproduce with the help of spores and these plants are grouped under the phylum pteridophyta and examples of such pteridophytas are ferns and filverts. So plant kingdom has been broadly classified into four different phylum spermatophyta which has been further divided into angiosperms. These plants contain fruits that have encapsulated seed within the fruit or gymnosperms where the seeds are naked. The next phylum under plant kingdom is thallophyta, bryophyta, and finally, pteridophyta.